Hello and welcome to the Real Women Real Purpose talk show live in the On Purpose Woman magazine and global community Facebook page. I'm Jenny Robertson, one of the hosts of the Real Women Real Purpose talk show, and I'm also the uh, founder of the Real, oh, I'm going to get this all messed up. I'm the founder of the On Purpose Woman global community and the founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman magazine. On the Real Women Real Purpose talk show, we talk with real women who are living their lives on purpose and bringing their unique gifts to the planet. My guest today is Lauren Thomas, the Programming Manager of Common House in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're talking about why connection matters and what can happen when people come together socially for a common purpose. So thanks for being with me, Lauren. I'm excited to learn more about Common House and the role it plays in the community of Charlottesville. Yeah, thank you, Jenny, so much for having me. Excited uh, to chat with you. It's nice to meet you kind of officially now. Yes. Absolutely. So let me tell our viewers a little about you. Lauren Thomas was born and raised in Charlottesville, Virginia, and holds a degree in German language and literature. That is so interesting. That's another conversation probably, isn't it? Absolutely. (laughs) From University of Virginia. After teaching high school German for five years, she decided to switch career paths to event planning and has come to shine as Common House Charlottesville's programming manager, planning up to 40 events a month. When Lauren isn't working, she loves being outdoors, reading Harry Potter, and cuddling her four cute animals. I love it when people give me more personal things to read about because, you know, we could, we're going to find out what you do, but I love oh, absolutely. You know, right. a little bit about who you are. What's in the background. Exactly, exactly. So let's start with how Common House came to be. I read on your website that it was founded out of a desire to return to the things that knit us together, like bridge clubs and bowling leagues and neighborhood associations that the founders set out. They wanted to create a common space where people could come together. Absolutely. Food, drink, and experiences. So tell about tell us about the beginnings of Common House, Charlottesville, or Common House as a concept, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And the founder's passion and how it all got started. Sure. Yeah. So uh started five years ago, or I mean the inception, the thought inception obviously started way before that. Um, our first house came to be in Charlottesville five years ago. But like you said, the founders just realized, okay, there really is a lack of uh things that are bringing people together and we and don't this is really pre-pandemic have, even, this is pre-pandemic so, you know. <laughs> yes and so I know how funny too that now we need it even more mm-hmm. um but thinking about those things and so these two friends came or three friends initially came together um to build common house and at first they didn't know how it was going to work all of the different aspects of it i mean there's a restaurant there's programming events there's private events um i'm sure i'm forgetting something but a lot of different things that are going on in the house so how to make all of these uh things happen at once while bringing in people to um create that sense of connection that we all long for it's a huge vision, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And so I can imagine just doing small events myself. I can imagine sort of what it takes to actually pull off a concept like that. So Charlottesville was the an ambitious first task. Yes. Charlottesville is the yeah flagship house okay. um, opened in 2017. I would just had this sense that it had been around longer than that because it seems like such a well-oiled machine from what I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we... Um, And like I told you earlier, I've only been in this position for a year, so I can't, it's hard for me to speak of before I was there, but what they have done with the place is really impressive. And um, now having two more houses and looking to open even more, like the goal is to have them all across the country. Wow. Um, So super ambitious, but it is a well-oiled machine. Everyone there um, loves what they do. And so I think that definitely makes a difference. It sure does. Where are the other two houses? The other two houses are in Richmond and Chattanooga. Okay, wonderful. Anything planned for maybe Baltimore area? DC? Not that I know of, okay. yeah. I have to add here that uh, Common House Charlottesville is also the brand new home for the On Purpose Woman Global community to have our in-person monthly meeting. So yeah. I haven't been there yet. I've only seen the pictures, but I will be there in October. I'm going to be the speaker in October. Oh, lovely. Oh, I'm so, so excited. I'm sure you don't go on vacation or anything during that okay. time, right? Because I'd love to meet you. But it just um, seems like it's conducive to social events, but also a place for meetings, for people to come together to, I think you have movie nights there and, mm-hmm. and bridge games and other kinds of games and just all sorts of stuff. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that. 
But I also read on your website that Common House is designed for connection. What do you mean by that? Or not you, but, but yeah, what, you, yes. you work there and you represent it. So what absolutely is everyone who, who works there. Um, so what we crave as humans are relationships. What we're built for are relationships with other people. And so to have a space uh, where you can feel comfortable, you know that you're going to be safe there. No one's going to judge you. Um, we have multiple things going on there that bring people to, I mean, wine tastings, um, DJ, everything from wine tasting to DJ nights to lectures, um, and a great co-working space. So a place yeah. to, um, get to know new people, get to know like-minded people, uh, is sort of where we're going with that and building relationships with other people rather than just meeting people at a bar or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Because people show up and they see some of the same people they saw last time or now Absolutely. they've created community and they're actually calling each other and saying, are you going to Common House on Saturday? For exactly. This? Yeah. Or oh, are you signed up for this thing? Are you signed uh -huh. up for that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's such a wonderful concept. I'm, I wish I'd thought of that years ago too. Well, I kind of did yeah. a, little, <laughs> a little small way. What are some of the positive things you've seen as a result of people coming together? Because you mentioned that you give people a place to come in and feel safe and that they're not judged. I mean, that's a big thing to pull off right there. How do you set that up? And what have you seen happen as right. a result of that? Yeah, I think a way to set it up is also, I'm at a lot of the programming events too. And so being there and being a familiar, cause I'm always in the house, uh, meeting new people, talking to old people. I've made a lot of friends there. So a ton of friendships and friend groups will come out of Common House. Uh, we've had some romantic relationships come out of people meeting at Common House, um, but mostly hopefully people feeling like they are, not to use the word connected again, but there we go, um, feeling like they are plugged into the community around them. Mm -hmm. um, well, Charlottesville is a decent size city, but yeah. it also has a small town feel to it, doesn't it? It does. It absolutely does. And we have about, people keep, or people always ask me how many members we have. So at the Charlottesville House, we have about 1,200 members. Wow. Um, but that does include out of town members and people who don't use it as much. So there's mm -hmm. never 1,200 people in the house at once, obviously. Sure, sure. Um, I just had this vision of there being a buzz there a lot, though, that when yes. it's like something's happening, you've got all these different. And again, talking to Mia Zachary, who started the group there, uh, you've got all these different levels, you've got different rooms. And I just had this feel of like a just a synergy or an energy that's like zipping around the place. And it's just got this cool vibe. Absolutely. It really does. I'm excited for you to come check it out. I am too. I am too. So you're the, you're the director of programming. How do you decide what's a good fit for Common House? Like somebody comes in and says, I've got this workshop I could do. Do you vet it out somehow or what do you do? Pardon me. Yeah. So Typically, so lots of different things. With musicians, I will I'll get them to send me a sample of their music and sort of decide whether or not it's the vibe for Common House, mm -hmm. um, just based off of what I've seen and what um, I've gotten for member feedback. Uh, member feedback is a huge thing also with things that members want to see, I want to provide. And so we, um, every time you come into the house, there's an op you have an option to receive a feedback email that you can fill out. Um, and a lot of people will put different program. Oh, I loved this. So this wasn't my favorite. Um, I'll also see things that we've done in the past that have or haven't worked well and try to either repeat or not repeat those things. If someone comes to me with a new idea, I'm pretty open to trying anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try anything once. And if it doesn't work out, then I just won't do it again. So I'm always willing to bring new things into the house because I know there is a plethora of different um, interests around town, things that people are good at, things that people don't know and want to learn more about. So, yeah. It's kind of like, and I, I felt this way when I was having in-person meetings in Maryland, as I mentioned to you before this, that we haven't started back yet, but I felt like I got to throw a party and people showed up. So it must feel like you're yeah. throwing parties there all the time, right? That's what I tell people. I get to plan parties and go to them. Yeah. Um, and it's so great, no matter what, because there's always a fun group of people there, whether it's like the people that I'm really close with or another group of people, it all depends on what the program is. But yeah, I just get to go and have a great time. And so that's the main reason why you love it, I guess, because you also have a lot of autonomy, it sounds like, to 
bring in the things that that you think will work and absolutely and get to be really creative with it. Yes. And my uh, supervisors are very flexible and very, um, very great about giving me that autonomy. Mm -hmm. If I ask questions, they'll come back with, what do you think is right? And so then I have to be able to make those decisions. But one reason I do really love it is the opportunity that I get to be around people all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And we just met for the first time today on Zoom. And I can already tell that you've got this personality that is just perfect for what you do. Oh, well, thank you. I felt like you made me feel welcome on my own interview. (laughs) You know what I mean? You just have a way way of being that is really conducive. And it seems like you really want to be doing what you're doing. So that's such a big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a total, it's a total switch from uh, how I felt teaching just wasn't for me. And it's nice to have something now that is uh, bringing me joy throughout my day. And you also, you know, the connection piece is why Common House exists. And you can right. also help people to feel welcome, to feel included, to feeling like they belong. Because, Absolutely. you know, you mentioned in the beginning, we all crave connection. And it's interesting because I, I did a talk a few weeks ago to a local spiritual center call, talk, um, called Craving Connection. Yeah, we do. But we also want to feel like we belong to something. 100%. It's not just being a part of it, but right. being welcome in it. Yeah. Um, and that you are a part of it, that you can bring other people to it, Mm -hmm. um, that you can share in these experiences. So let's talk about that a little bit more, this whole idea of connection and belonging and why it matters. Let's dive Mm -hmm. a little bit deeper beyond the, oh, they get to come together, they get to play cards or dance or do karaoke or, or have a business meeting or meet some other entrepreneurs. But on a deeper level, why do you think that matters so much? Yeah. Um, that is a great question. I'm trying to think of a, why, yeah, why does connection matter so much? It's at the core and the root of who we are as people. I mean, if you notice, or I can speak for myself, but if I spend too much time alone, I start to get in my head and start to think things that aren't true. I'm comparing myself to other people. I am thinking that I'm not good enough in whatever way and being around um, other people, hopefully you form those relationships where people can sort of debunk debunk those myths about you that you were thinking in your head. You're not so much um, about yourself. You learn how to care for other people, um, what people's different needs are. Um, Yeah, so it just sort of goes back to, I feel like the core of our being is to be in relationship with people. I think that's a, a great answer. And you you mentioned something that I'll, I'll take it even a little bit further sure. that we we want to see ourselves reflected in other people, I think, because people mirror back who they think we are. Right. If they're, yeah. if they're the right people for us. They will mirror exactly. our true selves and will remind us of who we are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so I think we all want to be seen. We all, we all want to be seen and heard and feel like we matter. 100%. And even people like me who tend to be more introverted, and some people find that really hard to believe because I love speaking to big groups. I love being front and center, but that has nothing to do with introversion and extroversion, as I'm sure right. you know. Yes. And I, I have really, real, I, I have flourished during the in-home time. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be out there with people as much as I kind of thought I did, yet there are some things that just cannot take the place of I mean, Zoom is great. I'm, I'm so happy we have it. Right. I connected earlier, a woman spoke at my one of my Zoom meetings. I hadn't seen her in four years in person. And so we stayed on later and it felt like we were in the same room together. I Yet, love it. There's still that other deeper need, I think. There is. There's the need to be in person because I did realize too, coming back from, so when I started this job was just when things were beginning to open back up mm-hmm. um, and the rush of people that we saw coming in for not just um, events, but co-working too, needing to get out of the house, um, feeling cramped up, feeling that they, right, haven't had this connection with other people. And we sort of didn't realize how much we needed it until we weren't allowed to have it. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about the people who show up there. Is it a wide range of ages? Is there a lot of diversity? I mean, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So wide range of ages. Most of our population is between 30 and uh, 50 with, and then like on the tail ends, about 20%, 60% in the middle. 
um, we are becoming a lot more diverse. So that was part of my goal in starting to work there was to bring in some more diverse programming um, to help people of color feel more welcome at Common House. Uh, because on the outside, I do realize that it can just look like a white social club to some people. Um, and people have said that, it's, that is not an original thought. Um, but so feeling, uh, inviting different people in, um, let's see, a lot, of, a lot of tech people, a lot of people in tech um, on the co-working side, but then um, on the people who come in for programming, a lot of foodies, people who love to drink, I mean, and people who are open to new opportunities too, mm -hmm. I think. Wow. So it definitely is a wide variety of people. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting that you said it, from the outside, it could, like a, it could look like a white social club because that surprises me having never been there because I know the roots of this particular common house are what? You've got some historic stuff going on there. Yeah, it started as an African-American social club. Um, and so some people, honestly, some people were sort of mad at the space that it holds because it's um, on Vinegar Hill, which is a historically black neighborhood um, and that the founders are not black and there is this whole thing about that, but wanting to, but obviously they want a place that feels safe to everyone, no matter what your race is. And yeah. And maybe it'll preserve the building. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That is also a hope. Wow. So how long ago was it an African-American social club was, and what was it? Oh, in the 1800s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty no. sure. <laughs> so it was, it was in a community of more, probably more affluent African-Americans because it was. Yeah. Well, community. actually it was, it was on a pretty, in. yeah. Charlottesville has a really interesting history of, um, segregation, obviously. And this was one of the places they just sort of like shoved all the black people into this neighborhood. Oh, okay. Okay. And then they did the best they could with it. Then I guess, right. yeah, I guess it was um, last or oh, might've been this week. This week has kind of gone fast. I interviewed a woman, a white woman who is a diversity, equity and exclusion, inclusion, excuse me, DEI, not DEE, <laughs> diversity, equity and, and inclusion officer at her company and also mm -hmm. with the spiritual center that she volunteers with. And we talked about this idea of how to create a more diverse workplace or organization. Right. And I learned a lot from her. And it sounds like that, um, you know, this whole idea of, I don't even know where I'm going with this, this whole idea of diversity, you know, we can say we, we can say we want to be diverse or we can say, but the act, it takes lots of action. Right. What are we actually doing about it? What are we it? actually doing? And I know for me, having this business for 22 years, I very much wanted an organization where all the women who showed up didn't look just like me. Right. And absolutely. It took time to create the space to give, to, to be consistent, to let people know that they were, because if all they see is white faces when they show up, then might they right, turn they're... back. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't even plan to talk about this, but I think it's an interesting concept given your the history of the building. And now sure. you've got this, this emphasis that you really need to take into consideration. Absolutely. Make yeah. Sure that everyone feels like they can they can come in and belong there. 100 percent And I mean, hopefully too that it is affordable for everyone and that we want to work with people if it is not affordable for you, we still want you to be part of okay. our community. Okay. That's an important thing because diversity isn't just about race, which sometimes it tends to get, but it's about all these other things. And economic status is one of those things as well. 100%. There is a membership to Common House, correct? There is, yes. It is a monthly fee uh, with a one-time initiation fee. Okay. And then you have a restaurant there that, pe I mean, it sounds like people well, can just come and spend the day if they want to. Oh, 100%. Full restaurant, full bar, a nice rooftop terrace. Um, if you don't write, there are a bunch of members who have midweek, like I know a member who has Wednesdays off and he's just still always in the house, hanging out with friends, coming by to say hi, reading a book, oh. whatever it is. So, right. You don't have to be working or attending a programming event. You can just come to chill. It's a place you can go alone and be alone if you want and yet feel part of something. Right. A home away from home. Yeah. Because I just um, got this vision of, of somebody sitting and reading a book quietly. 
Yes. Right, instead of being home alone reading a book. And that would feel very different to someone who needed more of that. Or who right. And there's always a little bit of, like you said earlier, a buzz around yeah, you. So there's yeah. music going. There's always people. I like to work in an area that has a little bit of, for lack of a better word, chaos around me. Even yeah, though it's chaotic, good chaos, but... right? Good chaos. Yes. Wow, this interview is going a lot quicker than I thought it was with, because we're covering so much ground here. But I want you to tell me if there's anything that you want to talk about right now. And then I'll ask you a couple other questions. Oh, gosh. Um, what coming up, what do you have? You have some new programs yeah. coming up? Or anything so we've got like some um, cool programs coming up. Let's see. Um, I can actually look at my calendar right now okay. and tell you some cool things. Um, let's see. We have got um, some tarot readings with Mia coming up next oh, wow. month. Um, a nice DJ night that's going to have four DJs. Uh, we do trivia night every Tuesday, rooftop yoga every Saturday. Um, we have a drag dinner that's coming up in August. Um, so a bunch of, we've had these drag queens come multiple times and that's super fun. Well, that's cool. Um, we've got a tomato dinner coming up. So it'll be a paired dinner with drinks that um, is all centered around tomatoes. Wow, are people donating their garden, their fresh garden tomatoes? Oh, I wish. Are you getting those delicious tomatoes? Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I wish I knew, I don't, we have a bunch of heirloom tomatoes in house, which I love, which was really great. So yeah. um, the seasonal theme, uh, but yeah, you can always, and one of the great things too, I think I was telling you earlier, um, feedback from members or what members wanna see is one of the best ways for me to get programming onto the calendar. So I've had people come by and say, oh, I want to meet more entrepreneurs and boom, I can get an entrepreneur's happy hour on the books yeah. easy. Um, or I would like to, I have a lot of, I had a member come and say that he had a lot of knowledge on tech and wanted to share that. So we did a five part tech series, one a month, and that was really well attended to learn different learn about cryptocurrency, learn about a bunch of other things that I have no idea about. Um, yeah, so a lot of fun, th always hopefully a lot of fun things coming up in a, um, a diverse grouping of things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, so it feels like there are lots of things to choose from. A lot of things to choose from. And it brought up something for me when you mentioned, we mentioned tar tarot readings and you mentioned drag dance, that that's not everybody's cup of tea. Right. And, and there could be pushback, I guess. So it sounds like you're adventurous about trying things. Yes. And some people could decide, well, that's that whole place isn't for me. True. Because, you know, we're not we're not for everybody anyway, because everybody can't fit in there. Absolutely. Everybody, there's not space for everybody to show up there. So right. I, I applaud you for wanting to kind of work outside the box like that and you know let's try this and see like if nobody comes then you'll know maybe it wasn't a great idea absolutely like which is not shy before. away from it because you don't want to offend anybody right yes absolutely and that's so a tough, do, that's a tough dance to do sometimes it, it is a really tough you're absolutely right a yeah. tough dance to do but there um I've seen things and right like you said if it doesn't work I've had an event where no one showed up um and I was like okay the partner is still getting paid and <laughs> we'll move on and we won't do it again. Um, but it is a lot of my job is about taking risks. And I think that in, in life, we need mm -hmm. to take risks. But if I want to go anywhere and grow in this job, that is definitely something that I have to do. Yeah. And it's walking the talk of connection because, you know, magical things can happen if somebody thinks they're not going to be comfortable or thinks they're not going to like that type of person or and right. they, they meet them and there's something happens. I mean, that's part of the whole connection piece is not getting comfortable and hanging out with the people who are just like you. 100%. And that's what I think is so another great thing about Common House is that you can show up by yourself mm -hmm. and people will welcome you in or you go up and you want to, oh, I've seen this person a lot. Every time I come in for co-working, let me just go talk to them. No one's going to be like, no, please don't, please don't talk to me. Um, everyone at least everyone that I've encountered in the past year is very open to, they're there because they want to meet new people. Yeah, probably this vibe that says this isn't for you if you're, you know, if you want to be alone all the time. Right. Then keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. I want to, I want one in my neighborhood. I want one in my community. I know. My sister lives up in Fairfax too. And she's like, oh, when is, when's one coming to Northern Virginia? Oh, that sounds really amazing. So Lauren, how can our viewers learn more about Common House and what you offer? 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, commonhouse.com is our website, has all of our goings on. So all of the programmed events on there, um, has them for each house too. So you can sort by Richmond, Charlottesville, Chattanooga. Um, also always happy to give tours of the house. So if you're in the mm -hmm. area, you can schedule a tour, um, whether you're in Richmond, Chattanooga or Charlottesville. And you can do that on the website too, or by calling um, any of the front desks and um, either myself in Charlottesville or the membership director will give a tour and sort of the same in um, the other respective houses. You just brought up a question I have. Uh, the other two houses, Chattanooga and Richmond, are they in more historic buildings or are they new? They are also or? in historic buildings, okay. yes. I forget, oh, I can't remember the Richmond one, but the Chattanooga one is an old YMCA. Oh, nice. Yeah. So they have a lot of, or I get envious of them sometimes because they have so much more space than we do. So they can, they've got a full gym oh. and a big pool and things like that. Um, so the amenities as they, as we get more houses, it just keeps getting better and better. I just love it. It's hard to believe that you've only been around for five years, that this organization has only been right. around for five years. Like I say, it's just, the idea is wonderful and the execution has been spot on, it sounds like. And sure. they're so lucky to have somebody like you that is so invested. Oh, well, thank you and, so uh, much. I'll, I'll, I'll let them know that. Tell me who to call. Next. Yeah, absolutely. After, After this, this, I'll video, send you right? right. <laughs> yeah. And is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't uh, touched on? Um... Yeah, I think I just want to reiterate that Common House can be for anyone, um, that it's not just for corporate people or people who just like to drink. I don't know. There, there are lots of different things floating around that people may think about Common House. And honestly, I had some of those before I started working there. I was like, is it diverse? Is it, is it welcoming? Interesting. Um, I don't know, but coming into a, I really do think that you feel the vibe right when you come in um, at the front desk to should set off like how the vibe is going to feel throughout the house. So I would encourage people if you are in any of the areas where we have a common house to come by and check it out. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your passion and and this really exciting concept. If people aren't going to put one in, in Maryland, I hope they come up with an idea to do something similar and absolutely you know, do something like that. But it's not going to be me. Um, <laughs> but I just love this whole idea of bringing people together and giving them a place to to belong. And right. yeah, and it's not just bring, if they want to be sure, yeah. right, and not just bringing them together, but like sharing experiences yes. too. Yes, uh, which I think is a really great portion of it. I do too. So thanks so much for being with me today, Lauren. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jenny. And thank all of you for joining us for the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show live in the On Purpose Woman magazine and global community Facebook page. If you love this interview and you want to share it with your friends, it will be on our YouTube channel over the next 48 hours. So go on over to the On Purpose Woman global community on YouTube, subscribe, and you can sign up for notifications if you want. There are over 120 inspiring, informative, and fun shows for you to watch on our channel. And in May, we started sharing videos of the speakers at all of our On Purpose Woman Global Community Zoom gatherings. I'll have a new interview for you next week. On Monday, August 1st, I'll talk with Bessie Estanoktok about how you can embrace your intuitive woo and shine your light. You can always find out what's coming up on the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show by going to opwgc.com and clicking on On Purpose Woman magazine. Look for the spread in the table of contents. And while you're there, check out the On Purpose Woman global community. Thank you again for watching the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show.